Okay guys, let's talk about some rookies who have been impressing lately, but we're not talking about every rookie, so of course Wemby's been lighting the world on fire, Chet remains great, Asar, Lively, and Hakez were all really good right when they showed up. So I'll mention those guys here so nobody gets mad at me, but like I kind of wanted to talk about other guys. And I'm not ranking anybody, we're just talking about guys. Let's start with Brandon Miller, who I think now has like 19 games of at least 20 points this season. And I think the journey for Brandon Miller this season, man, has been, you know, when he shows up, he is playing off the ball a bit for the sake of LaMelo and Rozier having the ball. And he proves right away, very good shooter with a quick release who can relocate within the flow of an offense or, you know, set like one off ball screen somewhere and then flash out to three or whatever. He showed pretty early on that he could attack off the catch, get into his pull-up two, or get into like his floaters or free throw line jumpers. And then he would get pick and rolls and DHOs kind of sprinkled in uh, for him as well, right? And it wasn't perfect all the time. Like you certainly saw at times where it looked a little awkward with him trying to finish around the rim or just figuring out, oh, the big is, you know, giving me this much space. So I got to be this aggressive on this screen, or I got to try to get the defender on my back for this one. Just things you got to figure out as a rookie, right? Well, the season has gone on. LaMelo once again is hurt. Uh, Rozier, he gets traded, and now Brandon Miller is getting more pick and rolls. At least my eye test suggests that. NBA.com says he's up to about five pick and rolls per game now, and he's just doing good stuff. I mean, to give you an example, like in the recent one against the Raptors, uh, so he gets an off-ball screen from Michich, which then leads to him getting a DHO from Grant Williams, which becomes a screen, and now he's got RJ kind of on his back as he's surveying, oh, Jakob Pertl's like kind of high on the screen, but it's still a bit of a drop, so I got a little bit of space to work with. And he gets RJ on his back, and then it flows into a pull-up two-pointer, kind of like Devin Booker style. Or like one play against the Lakers where he dropped 35, where you got like Nick Richards uh, setting him a pin down, so where he can then get the ball from Ish, and then it goes into another screen action with Nick Richards, this time just a pick and roll. And then it's a pull-up two with AD just dropping back on the screen. Also, shout out to Ish Smith, 35 years old. I mean, he, he got waved a month ago, but dude's been in the NBA for a while. Yeah, now look, with Miller, because of just how much he's got to do for the Hornets now, especially with LaMelo and Rozier not here now. Not every game is going to be efficient. And I think uh, the swing thing for him long-term is going to be how many free throw attempts can he get and just how good can he get at finishing around the rim and all that. Not to say that he can't already pull off like evasive finishes around the rim, but it's more so like the physical finishes as well as will like a few of these floaters and pull-up twos that he leans on a lot become more shots at the rim, you know, that type of stuff. And then as far as Miller's passing... You know, I immediately thought of, like, other guys in his sort of, like, archetype, like, wings who can score, right, and can run some of their own offense, but they're not going to average, like, 10 assists per game. So we're talking the world of, like, Chris Middleton, Paul George, Jason Tatum, these types of guys, right? Well, those guys usually hover around four to five assists per game. I think Miller can get there. And so for the Hornets, I mean, look, if we can just see LaMelo and Mark Williams healthy for a whole season along with Brandon Miller's growth, then that would be cool. Next, we're going to go to Amen Thompson, who uh, has been filling up the stat sheet like crazy lately. Steals, blocks, assists, a whole lot of rebounds. Of course, he's one of the best athletes in the league. We all know this. His scoring has been a little lower in the last like four or five games, but even so, he, he did have a decent amount of like double-digit scoring games there. And he also does stuff that does not show up in the stat sheet. Like I was watching their last one against the Spurs last night. He's got a play where he helps off of Keldon Johnson to contest a Malachi Branham layup. That becomes a miss. Uh, he switches on a Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson screen within the three-point line. And then he's there to have a really good straight-up contest on Keldon at the rim to where that's going to be a miss. And then he also had a huge block where uh, he blocks Zach Collins at the rim after Collins gets an offensive rebound and Amen just gets off the floor at a speed that even looks crazy for NBA players. Let's talk about the rebounding. It's been a lot. I mean, he's crashing the defensive glass. He's crashing the everything glass. I mean, as far as offensive rebounds, been the, the amount of putbacks and everything that this dude has had already, uh, it's been a lot. Not that I'm going to try to call out specific putbacks. Like, you know what a putback looks like. but Or he'll cut from, like, the corner to the dunker spot. And then he'll get a dump-off pass from, like, Jalen Green, and he'll go up with it for a dunk. Or he'll cut off of, like, Shen Goon operating at the free-throw line. He's also been able to do some work in transition on and off the ball. I mean, he had a play in their like Pelicans game a little while ago where he uh, hits Jordan Hawkins with a crossover, and then that goes into a spin move, and then he hits like this reverse layup for a three-point play. You got yes, I do think his handle specifically in the half court does still need to improve some, but I mean, for where it's at now, it's it's definitely promising. I remember, like, in their Suns game recently, like, he blocks KD's jumper from behind. He blocks Bull Bull on a turnaround jumper. He gets a lob from Fred when he's in the dunker spot. It's just, like, what Amen can do at his position is not normal. 
And the passing has already shown the signs too, whether it's like simple swing passes, whether it's like, I forget what game it was, but he, there's a play where I, I think he gets an offensive rebound and then he's just underneath the rim and he makes this great kick out to Dylan Brooks at the top of the key for a three. And he can pull off some really good passes, whether it's like finding Shen Goon on the roll or uh, collapsing the defense in order to make a kick out to somebody in the corner. Like he's got those skip passes and stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, his turnover percentage is almost exactly what his assist percentage is. And like, yeah, that's a rookie thing where he's going to have to figure out, you know, what passes he can't make. And, and again, getting a little better on the handle as well can help all this too. As far as the jumper, I mean, yeah, we, we all see it. He has to get better. Now if we can talk about uh, Keontae for a little bit. The flashes just, they keep on keeping on, man. I mean, his last one against Miami, he's got like a pull-up three over Rozier, a couple catch-and-shoots over Rozier. He's beating uh, Jimmy on a switch, or he's blowing by Bam on a switch after Bam was like a little higher on the pick-and-roll. Uh, against like the Hawks, he had a couple of really great passes where they were like uh, skips to Colin Sexton like a couple times in that game. Uh, he's had some like wraparound passes underneath the rim to like John Collins for three. I think there was a play recently... Uh, for Taylor Hendricks, a similar thing. I know the, the Collins one was in the Magic game. In that Warriors game, he was just going nuts from three, whether it's catch and shoots, off the dribble, DHO from like Collins with uh, like Steph giving him a little bit of room or whatever. Like that's been interesting for him, kind of out of the gate, you know, those off the dribble threes where he's been better on those than he has been on catch and shoot threes. Uh, with Keontae, man, there's just something there. The flashes just keep on flashing. Now let's talk about pods for a little bit. As he works off of screens, as he sets some screens in the Warriors' offense, obviously the shooting is there. I mean, the guy's got, what, basically three times the assist to turnovers. He's also, like, probably not that quietly at this point, one of the best rebounding guards in the league. He'll attack off the catch for them. He'll have little plays where, like, I don't know, GP2 is screening for him, and then Pods is hitting him on a bounce pass. And we've also had some games recently where his shot attempts have been uh, a bit higher. Obviously, he's playing a lot of minutes for a team, uh, trying to win and all that. No, but, I mean, Pods has been, he's been great. Next, we're going to go to Grady Dick, who is averaging about 11 points a game in his last 15. Within that, you've got like a 22-point game. you got some 18-point games. Uh, his last one was actually his first game in a minute where he didn't make a three. But yeah, lately in his last 15, he's shooting 45% from three, over 50% from the field. And, and it is cool to see him like kind of have a knack for getting open corner threes and transition and stuff. Of course, you have just the catch and shoots and the flow of the offense, getting it from Quickly or Scotty or RJ or maybe Olenek at the top of the key. But the Raptors are also putting Grady in actions, whether it be as him screening for, like, let's say it's RJ or Scotty. Like, they've run this play a few times where, like, Grady will screen for RJ or Scotty on the wing for them to get a cut. And then this will be, like, with Olenek at the top of the key. And then from there, it could be, like, Grady flows into, like, a mid-ranger if he's got the opportunity. Or he might just dash out to the three-point line if his defender went with, like, Scotty or RJ. Uh, you've had a little bit of, like, catching, pull-up two stuff out of Grady, a couple turnaround jumpers from mid-range. You've had, uh, you know, a couple of cuts when the opportunity's there. Like, now, I don't think he's going to shoot a million shots a game, and I also don't know if he's going to clear, like, 30 minutes a game consistently. He's been kind of hovering around, like, 24 minutes a game a lot. Now we go to Cam Whitmore who now has a few 20-point games under his belt. He almost had 20 in their last one against the Spurs. And, man, I tell you, he had two plays going at Wemby, one where he finishes underneath the rim against Wemby after Amen threw him a bullet pass from the top of the key. And Cam, he had to use his strength to uh, sort of knock Wemby off the spot for a second so he could finish. And then another one, he goes at Wemby straight on a pick and roll. And he, he's basically a cannonball just going into Wemby. And uh, he missed the initial shot, but then he got the, the put back on the layup. And that's the thing with Whitmore. I mean, he's just ruthless attacking the rim, and he's looked good in transition. And uh, look, I mean, Cam's not a perfect player. I mean, the ruthless drives can sometimes get him in trouble. Uh, you know, in a recent one against the Suns, he's got a play where he beats Bull Bull off the dribble, and it looks really good. And then there's like three Suns in the paint, and he gets blocked because he just kind of tried to force it. Or another one where he has this like super wild reverse layup that doesn't go in when like a kickout could have been the move. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, he's got basically double the turnovers to assists. But how good he's been as a scorer already, like, yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, good stuff. I do want to talk about Scoot for a little bit. Unfortunately, he's missed a lot of games recently with injuries. But the one thing to notice, in my opinion, has been the free throws have been trending upwards. Uh, like in late January, game against the Sixers, a couple of plays where he goes at Embiid, like in the full quarter on the pick and roll, and he gets a foul. Or in like the, the Wolves games, you know, a play where he's going at Rudy on a high screen with Aiton, gets downhill, forces Rudy to you know, shift his hips a little bit. Uh, he fouls him with his off arm. That's good. Uh, he had like 12 free throw attempts against the Nuggets a couple times where he's like going at Peyton Watson with an in and out dribble and then just, 
you know, force him the contact or like he'll do something similar, but this time it's like DeAndre Ayton also helping at the rim as well. He goes right at him. So the signs are there for Scoot to be, you know, that downhill presence. But as I say all this, like they played the Nuggets twice recently. One of them, he got the free throw attempts. The other one, he was like three for 18 from the field. You know, GG can score. Yeah, his efficiency isn't great night to night, but when the actual team is back, that'll probably help him. Uh, Vince Williams is, I mean, he's not technically a rookie, but he played like 15 games in his actual rookie season. Like, you know, thinking of a defense of like Jaron and Desmond Bain and Marcus Smart and uh, Vince Williams and stuff like, yeah, that's that's pretty good stuff. You know, we'll see what the Grizzlies next season. Yeah. Right before I go, shout out to Monty Kamara.